Good evening, my fellow Americans, and to our allies and friends around the world. I speak to you today not as a bearer of good news, but as a messenger of truth in these turbulent times. About six hours ago, at approximately 8.45 a.m. local time, a U.S. carrier strike group was attacked while operating in international waters off the coast of Japan. Preliminary reports suggest that this brazen and unprovoked attack has originated from the People's Republic of China. Make no mistake, the United States will respond. We will respond in a manner that is proportional, precise, and decisive. We are a beacon of hope and freedom to the world, and that light will not be extinguished. Not now, not ever. May God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. It's 11 p.m. Zulu time. 8 a.m. in Tokyo, 302 miles above the Pacific Ocean, Yaugen 21 circles the Earth at 32 times the speed of sound. The Yaugen is a military reconnaissance satellite supporting the People's Liberation Army. It is equipped with synthetic aperture radar, a form of radar which can detect and classify naval ships day or night no matter the weather. After weeks of political turmoil following Taiwan's declaration of an independent sovereign state, the Politburo of the Chinese Communist Party has decided to resolve the issue by force. Prior to an invasion, the People's Liberation Army has been instructed to destroy or disable all U.S. military assets in the region. The Yaugen is tasked with locating a U.S. carrier strike group training off the coast of Japan. At 11.13 p.m., the Yaugen detects five naval vessels operating near the Izu Islands. Analysis of the radar imagery reveals that the group is headed by a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier. Based on intelligence reports, this is likely to be the USS Ronald Reagan, operating out of Yokosuka, Japan. Its air wing is potent, consisting of FA-18E Super Hornets, E-2D Hawkeyes, EA-18 Growlers, and MH-60S Seahawks. The USS Ronald Reagan is escorted by two Ticonderoga-class cruisers and two Arleigh Burke-class destroyers. Both classes are equipped with the RIM-161 Standard Missile 3, capable of engaging ballistic missiles but unproven in real combat scenarios. At 11.12 p.m. Zulu time, 24 Dongfeng anti-ship ballistic missiles launch from two sites. One site is near the Chinese port city of Dalian and takes the missiles in a southeasterly direction over Korea and Japan. The second site, near Nanjing, takes the missiles eastward over the Yellow Sea. Both missile salvos are designed to converge on the USS Ronald Reagan at 11.23 p.m., just 14 minutes after launch. As the missiles launch, two reconnaissance satellites operated by the U.S. National Reconnaissance Office spot the first signs of the impending attack. A KH-12 improved crystal satellite captures images of the Dongfeng launchers moving into position. Minutes later, as the missiles leave the atmosphere, an advanced trumpet satellite in orbit high above the Earth detects the infrared signature of the missile's rocket boosters. As they begin to approach speeds of Mach 8, the satellite imagery lacks the trajectory information needed to help the carrier strike group target the missiles. It does, however, result in urgent orders to the strike group to change direction and speed. If the ships are out of view of the missiles as they re-enter the atmosphere, they can avoid targeting. The commander of the strike group also gives orders for all ships to activate their AN-SLQ-32 electronic warfare suites. These present the final line of defense against the missiles and their 1,300-pound warheads, aiming to disrupt the radar seekers used to guide the missiles to the final location of the ships. At 11.20 p.m., the AN-SPY-1 radars aboard the escorts begin tracking the 24 anti-ship missiles at a distance of 117 nautical miles. One group of missiles appears just off the coast of Japan, with a second group approaching from the west, over the sea. As they descend at a speed of Mach 10, the escorts fire a salvo of SM-3 missiles, themselves capable of traveling at hypersonic speeds and costing a massive $10 million per missile. These eliminate 15 of the 24 missiles. As the remaining missiles from the westerly direction approach, they activate their radar seekers, but are unable to locate the ships due to a combination of radar jamming and the change of direction. One minute before impact, 
the carrier strike group launches another salvo of SM-3 missiles at both groups of incoming Dongfeng missiles. The SM-3 missiles find their targets on the group approaching from the west, with four further missiles destroyed. The salvo also destroys several incoming missiles from the northwest. However, seven missiles find their way through, with three striking the fleet. The USS Ronald Reagan is struck by two Dongfeng missiles, with the USS Princeton, a Ticonderoga-class cruiser, being struck by one Dongfeng missile. The remaining missiles were either destroyed or spoofed by chaff and electronic warfare measures. So, what was the result of the strike? The USS Princeton suffered significant flooding and fire damage. Despite the efforts of its crew, it sunk three hours later. The much larger USS Ronald Reagan was rendered combat ineffective, with damage to its bridge, radar, launch catapult, and hangars. The crew successfully managed to control flooding and fire and limped back to port at reduced speed over the coming days. But the strikes paralyzed US military assets in the area, laying the foundation for a move on Taiwan. The video demonstrates one such scenario, but altering the specifics of this strike achieved vastly different results. In the coming weeks, we will explore some of these different outcomes. Thank you.